Hello everybody, how are you? We are going to start in about three minutes and we are going to make a makeover of this frame and we are going to turn it into metal and rust look. So I hope you are going to enjoy. If you are watching, let your friends know and share the video with uh, everybody. You are in my studio in Galway, Ireland. And this is Finover, and I'm going to show you how to use Finover products for Prima marketing. So join me in a moment. Hello, Amisha. I'm going to just um, join Redesign with Prima so I can see the comments. Yeah. And we are going oh. to. Hopefully, I will be able to see the comments because there's always something going on. And my previous solution swipe left. Oops. Yay! Hello, everybody. We are going to start in a moment, so let your friends know if you would like to share this simple idea how you can turn this frame into metal and rust looking object. This is the right place. Uh, my name is Anna Dombrowska, also known as Finovar, and I'm going to show you how to use my products for Prima Marketing to make that makeover today. So hello to my patrons and hello to all of the mixed media and home decor fans. And I'm very glad to see you, and um, I hope this is going to be entertaining. Hello, Pascal, <laughs> and hello, Kate. It's very, very good to see you. And um, today we are going to work on a quite fun and not complicated techniques, which should be rewarding when it comes to final result, and you can apply them on any surface, which is great. Hello, Ingrid. Just let me do one thing and I have to release the hell puppy out of the cage. <laughs> Maluszku. Maluszku. Co to się dzieje? Co to się dzieje? He really wanted to say hello to everybody and we are going to start now. So the tools you're going to need are just some brushes, palette knife and we're going to mostly work with white gesso, a little bit of uh, heavy body gel for uh, gluing and we're going to use the white sand paste for texture and of course rust paste as well. And um, for metallic look there are two options we can use either metallic wax uh, or metallic acrylic paint and i recommend the latter because paint is going to accept the other colors much better so and uh, this is a plan for today and if you would like to share this video you can share it in create with prima group finover and friends open studio group and of course, for my patrons in Art Collective group as well, or any other place you would like to do it. Okay, so we are going to start now. And I will just tell you what kind of frame is it. <laughs> this is one of the Prima frames, believe it or not. A couple of years ago, Prima released these uh, really cool vintage looking frames in two styles. One was with this um, vintage decor and it's with the glossy finish as you can see and it's a kind or of wooden compound I would say and uh, of course here is the glass and you can put it in two directions on the wall and uh, this is um, just one of the examples. I'm sure you can find similar frames in very um, different sizes on the market. If you can imagine that to be a large um, antique looking mirror frame, that would be really cool. So you can just use your imagination 
one day when my bathroom will be redecorated i will have a large frame uh, with this antique frame a mirror on the wall as well but first you know walls and uh, tiles have to be done so i'm uh, hoping for that to happen so let's look at the table now this is the ceiling and that is the table i'm going to put you in the best possible position so you can see the whole frame yeah the frame is really nicely done as most of the prima items it's really good value for money so it is uh, nice looking but at the same time it is uh, not very expensive of course we need to remove the front and the back so uh, the glass and we have to whoops remove the backing trying not to uh, crush my nails and of course we have to be careful because the glass is real glass so i just make sure everything oh come on Yeah, I have to be careful. And when it comes to that step, oh yeah, carefully. I put it in a safe place. And first of all, when you have this kind of uh, object in your hands, you have to see what kind of finish is it. If you feel it was waxed before, or maybe it is covered with some kind of suspicious varnish, it's a good idea to sand it down a little bit. Uh, this is just kind of like glossy finish paint, so that should not be a problem. We can just start with the coat of white gesso, and then we can work on the top uh, using acrylic paints and um, other similar supplies. And um, I heard uh, during my last show that uh, some of you may not be sure what really gesso is for so i will talk about gesso during the painting process so you will have all the important information and i have to tell you for any kind of uh, red decoration this is really like must have item uh, this is um, kind of art medium that should be on every artist's table because it's a primer so it is preparing your surface to uh, to work with so primers may be thinner or thicker we are going to use white heavy gesso so i'm going to add a bit of this um, water into it so it goes smoother and of course we start with coat on the top of everything you don't have to be super precise but make sure that you are going to cover all the elements of the frame and i suggest to put two coats because uh, sometimes the first coat especially on the slippery surfaces may not be enough and um, once just so is dry and it dries really quickly it turns completely matte and it's also like e uh, isolation as well so that means because it is matte every kind of paint or every kind of wax is going to stick better to your surface and it's going to be easier to get the results that you want and because it is isolation it is going to prevent your paints or your uh, inks or your waxes from soaking into the background which is very important when you, for example, work on the absorbing uh, surfaces, for example, paper. You don't want uh, that to happen because, first of all, it may go on the other side. Second, absorbing means you use more of the product, which is not always great. You want to have uh, great results uh, with saving, especially expensive products. And um, at the same time, this is just going uh, to make your surface stronger. Um, this is really important when you work on the, for example, journal pages and you plan to use quite thin or delicate paper as your background. Uh, extra coat of gesso, it is going to give you 
um, extra strengthness of your paper. So it is going to survive more of the techniques you're going to use on the top. Hello, everybody. I can see a lot of us here. Debbie is here. Karen Sue is here. We've got Robin here and Trisha. I'm very, very glad to see you all. And so far, I'm just putting first coat of Jessa on this frame. This is already uh, with these decorations in the corners, but to make it a little bit more fun, of course, I'm going to change the design a little bit. I'm going to use the heat gun to dry it. Uh-huh, it got stuck. And you will see just so dries quickly and everything will be possible to paint in the next step. Hello, hello everybody. So if you have very simple frame, of course you can uh, start with just coat of gesso and then adding some elements. I will just show you adding more elements to it so you can imagine how these could happen in the corners. This uh, Prima frame already had these designs. So I, this is the last one I have at home. The other ones are already in use. I put a lot of my family photos in these frames and they're in my living room. But this was the last one and I had no idea what to use it for. I had extras. So it was sitting um, in my drawer waiting for the idea and I decided we can use it to uh, make special metal looking rusty frame which is very cool and for some projects for some uh, interiors it is a really cool look that you can apply to any surface it may be on the furniture it may be on the accessories, it may be on the book cover, it may be on the canvas. It's really up to you. So you can see it's already turning matte, which means gesso is drying. And that means I will be able to put the second coat. Hello, hello. I can see a lot of people today. Great to have you. I'm just checking with my fingers. Yeah, almost there. Okay, so now we can put second coat of the gesso. Again, if you feel this is too thick on your brush, of course, you can add a tiny bit of water to soften it. I'm starting with the outside now because I think it may be smarter. If you're a huge fan of smoothness, you can also take delicate sanding paper and sand it after your gesso coats. But because it's going to be textured finish anyway, I'm not going to do it. It will be just wasting my energy. Okay, outside is done. You can see it really goes quickly. That's why you should never skip that step. Primer is important. Gesso is your best friend. So now we are adding our gesso again on the decor and on the frame. I will do it quite quickly. Some people wonder sometimes if you can replace gesso with acrylic paint and the answer is yes, but only in the situations when it is completely matte finish. 
something that is going to be completely matte and very, very sticky and not many paints have that quality. So check that first. Most of the acrylic paints, they have uh, semi-glossy or satin finish or glossy finish. And it's just good to know what they can do. Now we are ready for second layer of drying and for those of you we who are just joining we are using art basics heavy gesso from prima it is a white primer used for mixed media and home decor and assemblage techniques very good quality white gesso well rose gesso can be used on everything uh standard primer it's just another name for gesso rose uh, has a question about standard primer it all depends on the color but gesso comes in clear black white and it is a primer it is art primer which means it was designed to work for acrylic paints uh, acrylic painting or even oil paints but it's a primer and it works beautifully on wood. I don't have any other primer at home. If I need to prime something, I use gesso. So um, you probably, your standard primer will be probably more similar to clear gesso, which is completely transparent and matte. So something which uh, won't be really visible. I believe uh, standard primer for wood is kind of product that we would call gesso anyway. It's just like artistic name is gesso. Okay, so it, all, it is almost ready. I put the brush in the water because it will dry permanent, of course, and we don't want to lose the brush. I put it on the side. And now we can talk about options of metallic color, right? So I'm just going to give you an idea what you can use before we are going to start some of the um, extras. Uh, you can use acrylic paint in metallic finish. I'm going to use metallic silver spoon paint, which is uh, metallic uh, liquid creamy kind of uh, paint some people would be tempted to use uh, metallic wax I'm just looking for the silver color but remember if you're planning to do that um, there is um, I've got brushed iron here uh, there is a problem wax is greasy and resisting water so putting wax effect uh, sorry um, rusty effects or any other colors on the top of the wax it will be very hard it's not impossible but it is hard and uh, it's not going to be super permanent finish so now we have it ready for makeover uh, we can add some extras for example we can uh, glue some uh, elements to it to make it look different and uh, that may be for example elements prepared with uh, molds. Uh, you can use resin or clay. I have some of these done already. I wanted to include them into the design to just change the look of it a little bit. And also if you have a plain frame, you will know how you can change the look of it as well. So I have these made of resin, but I'm going to grungy it up. Of course, I'm going to add some um, other elements I'm going to use small bits and pieces from the mold called Mechanica and this is going to be like vintage um, let's say vintage uh, with a touch of steampunk so it's going to be slightly more fun you can see I've got some elements that look like cogs some of them look like screw heads so we can add them now using proper adhesive and this is uh, this is the moment when you have to pick something that you like um, i use 
art mediums for gluing. I don't really use glues because uh, I developed such formula for the art mediums. They work as dimensional glues beautifully. And this is saving me a lot of problems with choosing the right glue for the right surface. So I'm going to use heavy body gel as my glue. And you can see they are really cool little ones. And this is selection of different screw heads. I can always add these once I will feel I'm ready for the extra touches. And also, of course, you can use regular elements that you find. And that means uh, if you have some real metal findings, if you have maybe some elements from your garage or from your uh, kitchen that you would like to include in the project, why not? So, for example, to go with that style, I have a lot of metal bolts as well. These are um, screw heads of different kinds, which are um, Prima Marketing mechanicals I designed for them. So they are part of Finavar line and you can use them for decoration as well. So let's have some fun. Uh, the art medium I'm going to use it is heavy body gel. And this is a uh, transparent gel medium, very thick and very sticky. And that is something that you can use to glue basically anything to anything. It's acrylic based and it's art medium I use for uh, creating dimensional collage. And whatever you are going to glue with that, once it is dry, it's permanent and flexible and it's really, really strong and it's going to stay there forever. I was having this plan that I'm going to add these resin elements from Prima Molds in the corners to change the design a little bit. And here I'm going to put these ones. I think that's quite cool. And then we are going to grunge that up with a little bit of the screw heads and similar elements. So every time when you glue something, make sure this is going to stick. So don't be too stingy. It's more like sticking tiles on the wall. So this has to fill the empty spaces. And when we are sticking something on the top of an uneven surface, it's better to put more of the medium when you are gluing that down instead of trying to keep it super clean. You can always use your brush to clean it up or to push it back in the place. And the advantage of that, you can uh, use your hair dryer or your heat gun to uh, dry it. So you don't really have to wait long for the results. I just need to feel this is sitting in the right position. So I have to add quite a lot of gel. And some people want to take some shortcuts, some especially in the uh, decorative techniques, and they use the hot glue, uh, which is good only for temporary solutions. Like you can do that, but it's going to come off very quickly after a few days. So if you're just trying to put the things together quickly, yes, but after that, unfortunately, no. So this is the beginning two on the bottom, two on the top. Not bad at all. Now I can add some of the screw heads to this as well. I have one, two, three, four. Let's see how many. Oh, this is really the funny one. I need one more. Let's see if I have the same style. It would be nice to have four of them the same style, I guess. Hello? No. They have more of these, so... Hmm. One, two, three, four... Okay, so we'll do it a little bit differently. One, two, 
like this, one, two, like this. So this way you can change the look of the things that you have into something completely different very quickly. Have you got any questions so far? Because you are very quiet. If you hear funny noises in the background, it is because uh, the puppy is playing. So you have to forgive me the noise. but at all we have like extra screw heads so I like it then we put it on the other side as well you can use anything you like buttons you can use mold made elements like I'm using now you can use metal embellishments anything you like Hello, Frank. Good to see you. How are you doing? You're mesmerized. <laughs> oh, I can't, man. You are so kind. Okay, so we have these. Started to look quite nice. I have this one left. Let's see what we can do to make it look a little bit cooler. Let's see. <laughs> we can add some mechanical elements as well. <laughs> no. Let me think. I know. We are going to add one of the cogs and we're going to add some little screw heads so i need four a one two four so the plan goes like this, quite simple, but cool. The other ones can go to the back. Hello everybody. Hello to all people joining now. So far we are preparing the frame for uh, painting. So we are adding the elements on the top of the Prima frame and we started with two coats of white gesso and now I'm using heavy body gel to stick the elements permanently to the frame. So we have more cool design, something a little bit different to the frames I already have at home. It's just a good reason to uh, make it look a little bit differently so not everything is exactly the same oh I pushed it too much Thank you. It's really a pleasure to play with that. It's, it's a very simple technique. You can stick these elements easily once you have matte finish of your surface. So gesso is your best friend. Don't be shy. trying to make it more or less even pretty and now on the other side as well for good measure or you know what no I changed my mind we 
leave the top empty and we will do just the bottom. Because it was too symmetrical and started to bother me. Now, uh, once you have your embellishments elements glued down, you should dry it before you do anything else. So um, you can use your heat gun or hair dryer. And then of course, these should be primed as well. So they will accept our paint better. So don't forget about that. Don't get too excited because we have to give it a quick swipe of gesso as well. First, drying. Any questions so far? Because um, I'm not sure if I explained everything or you maybe missed something. I just want to make sure everything stays in place. This dries quickly, but it's a good idea to blow from different angles so your gel will have a chance to dry also in the empty spaces. Be careful because sometimes these elements get very hot, but they are fine. Now, I'm not going to glue anymore, so I will close the jar. Uh, but we have one more thing we can do to create more convincing look. And I will show you something that is going to look exactly like we want to get. We are going to go for the look like this. So as you can see on some of the elements, there's extra texture that looks like real rust. And that means it is a good idea to maybe add a little bit of the texture that is going to imitate the corrosion. The rust paste we're going to use already have some texture, but on a such bigger project, such big project, uh, it may be not so visible. So I will first add a little bit of the sand paste which is going to give more of the grit to our um, surface. So it's going to look more uh, convincing. White sand texture paste uh, from Art Extravagance by Prima. And uh, you can apply it with brush or you can apply it with the finger. It's another acrylic medium. And hopefully I can show you it has real sand in it. So in there, there is something which you can um, see later when it is applied. And you can just rub it in the selected parts of your finger, if you prefer. Then you can see the texture. Oh, yeah, oh, maybe like this. Or you can just use the brush, hopefully not too new to add it especially around the elements. So I'm going to take one of my older brushes and it is going to go here. I'm going to add it close to the decorations, but also in some spaces as well. So this is going to create the grit. Again, this is acrylic medium, so you can dry it with the heat gun. You don't have to wait for natural drying. You can continue once you will feel it is dry. So that's convenient solution. And we 
are going for corrosion, so kind of naturally we want to have a bit of that grit visible. Another option would be a graphite paste, which also has nice gritty, uh, great, nice gritty finish. It's black, but it's going to be painted anyway. Uh, oh, this one is moving. Or um, black sand, which has even more of the sand. Or you can create the paste yourself, mixing modeling paste or gel medium with the sand of your choice. And I'm sure you have some ideas where you can get the sand from. You know, there are places outdoors and they have sand for free. <laughs> so it's just a matter of finding the sand that you like. Yeah, sand paste is a really cool item. I want to add a bit of the texture also on the frame so it is going to be uh, more convincing. And precise application is not needed. Let me check if there's any other place, maybe I would like to add it. Hmm. Maybe here on the outside as well. Texture powder in gel is also an option. It's a little bit thinner. Uh, but it's beautiful texture. So, you know, you can just decide how mm, gritty you want to go. There are some products which have different gritty finish and also you can make this kind of paste yourself as long as you have proper uh, base, such as modeling paste or gel medium, like 3D gel. Okay, that should be enough so we can dry it and we can prime everything together i think yeah sand paste of course everywhere you like So that was texture paste from our extravagance white sand and quick drying. The base is transparent, just the sand is white. So on some points you will see even it seems to be transparent, but it is not completely transparent. So because we started with gesso, all these pastes, all these embellishments, they stick easily. There's no problem with attaching something. Nothing is going to chip off. And when you have a glossy finish or something with, which is varnished or something that is waxed, you have to prepare your surface before you're going to uh, put the uh, art elements on the top of it. So. Just don't skip the gesso, please. Almost dry. Oh, here. 
good advice is not to dry it too much because um, it will start to bubble. You have to move your heat gun or your hair dryer when you do so. So don't overheat one place unless you want the bubbles. Some people love them. So we are drying. You can use impasto paint instead of gesso, yes, because it's very thick and because it is um, sticky and matte. But this is one of the few kinds of the acrylic paint you can use for this kind of work. And this is um, important to know. So now to make sure all of these are going to be easier to paint, we can put a quick coat of gesso again. <laughs> and soon everything we will paint into metallic look. You can go from different angles if it's going to be easier for you. I'm only painting the places that I changed. So I glued something or I used the paste. And just so because it's a thin coat, it is not going to uh, reduce the grit. It's going to, uh, in fact, add some extra grittiness as well. One coat will be enough. It's just to make everything matte again. Perfect. Which just would color dries fastest? There is no answer to that question because all of them dry fast and it all depends on how thick the layer is. Thicker layers dry slower, thinner layer dry faster. So probably clear one because it's the easiest to apply it in a very, very thin layer because it's thinner. But I don't really see big difference personally. They all dry quickly. Hello, Magdalena. Hello, dzień dobry.
Okay. Now. I will try to show you. This is the texture we got. <laughs> Mam dzisiaj przerabiamy ramkę na bardziej metaliczno grandżową Także mamy tutaj tekstury, które zrobiliśmy z, um, przy pomocy białego um, piasku w paście, czyli white sand paste. So this is ready for painting. We are going to make the imitation of the metallic look. And as I was trying to show you before, this is the look we are going to get, right? We want to get metal and then rust on the top. So we have the grit, we have the elements. Now we have to paint it in the metallic colors. And I told you that there are options and the best option, I think it's going to be acrylic paint in metallic color. But if you are adventurous, you can try with uh, metallic wax. But be prepared, not everything will be um, going easily on it. Because uh, this is greasy finish, this is wax, and it's resisting to water. So any kind of water or acrylic based products on the top are going to resist as well. So this is not recommended. Much easier to work on the acrylic paint. When it comes to very small project, it doesn't really matter that much, but the bigger the project, the more it is important you use the proper product. Uh, so now in Polish, uh, tutaj wyjaśniam, że uh, do pomalowania na metaliczny kolor jednak lepiej jest użyć produktu akrylowego, czyli farby, a nie wosku, ponieważ woski będą starały się w wodę odpychać. I na dużych powierzchniach to może stanowić problem. Na malutkim projekcie niekoniecznie, ale im większy projekt, tym większa szansa, że coś pójdzie nie tak. Więc polecam farbę akrylową. I ona na pewno będzie dużo łatwiejsza do zaaplikowania. So now we just take the brush, we check the consistency of the paint, and we add the layer of the metallic. I usually start with one to see how this is going to cover. And then if I see that I have to make double coat after drying, I will make one more. I start on the outside. If you feel you need a little bit more of water, you can dip your brush in the water and we play. It goes really smoothly because this paint is really creamy. So now we start to pretend that this is in fact metal frame, not plastic, not glass, not wooden or not wooden compound like this one, it's metal. Of course, to make it look convincing, it was going to need some love, but this is our first step. I hope you can see what I'm doing, but once I will paint the sides, it will be much easier. Now we can focus on the front. And then we dab the paint on our elements. So it goes deeper in all the cavities and deep parts of the design.
And the advantage of the acrylic paints, it is that they dry quite quickly. So they will work really nicely. I'm not uh, sure what is the range of the metallic paints for furniture, but I'm sure there is um, an option of finding like bigger pots of the metallic products as well. But if you're working on something medium sized, this pot of paint will be enough to paint it without any problem. Now I just have half of the pot and I'm still ha I will still have a lot of leftovers. You can see the gritty finish starts to look really nice. We will need to put one more coat, especially on these flat surfaces, but everything goes really quickly. Yeah, it starts to imitate the metal, right? This was our plan. We're going to make old metal imitation, but I'm going to show you more of the tricks to make it look natural. Of course, you can imagine instead of silver, we're playing with copper or with gold uh, or any other color. But because I'm going to make rust effect, rust kind of comes on steel and iron. So it's logical we are starting with this color instead of gold, because gold with rust, it is kind of a challenge. This is not natural combination. So... I would use patina colors on the top of the mm, brass or on the top of um, copper instead. Just my suggestion. Now, quick drying. Oh, this one wants to come off. Oh, Naughty. Too much water on my brush. <laughs> Once you start repainting everything, you know, it really makes sense because that is turning into like one color, solid color, so you can really see what material it is made of, right? It is not plastic anymore, like it looks metal, so hell, of course, metal frame. First, we need to dry it. I usually paint two times because it is not completely possible to cover when, with one coat. Thank you guys, you are very, very kind. Thank you. So I'm checking, it's tacky, so it means it is drying. I need to dry on the other side now because this one is almost done. Of course, I will need to paint the outside again, but I will do it a little bit quickly in a moment. Yeah, so you can see one coat is not always enough, especially on the surfaces like here. We need to go two times. I'm trying to hold it so I don't have to touch the <laughs> table. You have to believe me, I'm just painting all possible sides of the project now. Mm, still feels a bit sticky, but it's okay. Now I can find the spots where I need to dab more paint as well. 
because sometimes ah, leave my finger uh, sometimes when you lift it and look from different perspective you find the spots that you missed So quick brush again in the parts that I feel they could use a little bit of paint and we can start the final steps of the makeover. Of course, when you work on the uh, bigger piece of furniture, instead of using hair dryer, it may be simply easier to just let it dry naturally, especially in the warm and dry place. But uh, with the smaller projects, like uh, mirror frames or just parts of your uh, furniture or the core pieces like this one, using heat gun or hair dryer, it's a great solution. nice i think it is old silver and look how much paint i used just a tiny bit it really goes long way surprisingly so it is um, encouraging really <laughs> if you see that you don't really have to use tons of paint and again it's all because gesso is here and gesso turns everything matte and it is so much easier to paint the surface once it has the matte finish. Any questions so far? You're a bit of just so addict. Yeah, me too. Once you will learn what it does for you, um, you will know that uh, any kind of project without a primer really makes no sense. Priming is very important. Okay, so I will put it here for a little bit of drying and I will bring one thing that I really need. Just need to bring clean water for the brushes because I use too much. Sorry. I'm back. Ah, 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 ah. Cleaning fingers. Okay, let's cool it down a little bit. And now, first thing that you may want to do is to add a little bit of the dirt <laughs> or shading because it looks suspiciously clean. <laughs> For something vintage, metal, I would say it needs a little bit of the dirty 
finish, so um, it's going to make natural depth and a little bit of antiquing, of course. So that is... Uh, yes, his pose much better. He forgot he had a problem already. Yeah, so if you want to do something that is going to create a bit of the feeling that it is dirty, you can just add a tiny bit of the just black acrylic paint and to put some water in it so it's going to be really thin and use it for creating a bit of shading i'm using impasto <sighs> sorry impasto peach <laughs> peach black color one of the very matte acrylic paints and you can just use the brush and the water sprayer i'm going to look for smaller not too sophisticated brush like this one and that means i will just spray some water on the paint so we can add a tiny bit of shading here as well so for example In here and then of course this is going to bring the details back a little bit better as well and that means it will look more natural so if you feel that it seems to be too clean you can just use that trick add a little bit of the acrylic that is going to go deeper into the details. Just compare this corner to this corner, right? Very simple. You, you can do it with antiquing waxes if you work with furniture, of course. Uh, this is one of the options, but I want to put acrylic medium on the top of that in a similar manner to imitate the rust. So I'm still avoiding the waxes. I, I can put waxes in the last step. Uh, somebody stole my paper. Oh. Master of mischief. Okay, and the same thing we do on the bottom. Hello, hello, Sabrine. As you can see, this application is kind of careless. It's just like wet brush, putting the paint in the right position, and then the water is doing the job. Makes sense, right? I pick up the excess of the water, so it's going to dry a little bit easier. And then the last corner. You're not going to get tired doing it, I, I, I promise. It's something that just happens quickly. Oh, somebody's very active now. Yeah, the joys of a puppy, exactly. Stealing my paper towels, now trying to eat the basket. So now, again, we dry it. Oh, 
widzę, że nie jestem sama. Cieszę się, że nie tylko ja cierpię. Psiaki i koty potrafią być bardzo ciekawe. Yeah, uh, we are just discussing the joys of having small animals at home. Yes, it is recorded, of course. You can come back to this later and you will see the first steps of the project and you can come back to it anytime you like. Sorry, I have to check that. That was a dog and cat accident. He was disturbing the cat. Oh. Poor little one. <laughs> he has to learn a lot about life. He's okay, yeah. Just a minor scratch. He was supposed to be in the cage, but he was crying so much that I let him go out and that is the punishment. I should be firm. Just a minor scratch. Oh. Myszki, ty paskudo ty. Yeah, Kitty needs personal space, I know, but he is careless, like he, is no, he has no fear yet, and this is the reason accidents happen. <laughs> He's two, uh, ten weeks now, so he knows just very, very little about life. <laughs> So you can see it's almost dry. I have this one here, which is annoying me, but I keep drying. I just put too much water around it. And now we can start with the rust finish. Of course, acrylic paints after drying are permanent. So there's no problem with painting over that and colors mixing. It's going to stay as it is and it's going to be completely fine. <laughs> it's hard to be firm with the puppy. I know. Oh my God, I know. Hello, everybody. Okay, I can now see if there's no dripping, probably it is completely dry, ah, almost there. So now, you can see now it starts to look more dimensional and more antique. So if you go just for antique look, this is what you could do. You can add some splatters, you can just use, you know, finish with the acrylic paints. As it is, later you can protect with, with transparent wax or uh, with some uh, water-based varnish, but we wanted to get the um, rusty look. So 
the rust you can create also using the products which are acrylic and their imitation of rust and i have a basic set here this is called uh, rust set like the rust paste the first set i created and there are three shades of rust in it and they already have some grit finish and the great results you are getting when you use them together which means they uh, you use them like paints and uh, at the same time they have texture in them so they create the look which is very convincing and of course they are not reacting because this is not real rust they are just texture paste with a lot of pigment and a lot of color and they dry completely matte just to show you again what kind of look we are going to get this is the rust we can get from these jars so this is mostly red rust but there are also brown shades here you can see how this is all going to look so this is the project i made oh a couple of uh, months not probably maybe one year and a half ago and that was the inspiration to show you how it looks on furniture this is the finish we're going to get so uh of course the this is fast drying product so it's good to uh, remember to work in sections and also when you feel that your paste starts to get thicker which may happen don't forget to add some water to it because it may just simply start to dry in your jar and many times people don't check on their art mediums and then they are surprised they start to get thicker and thicker and instead of reacting adding water or fluid medium they just they feel helpless and this is uh, sad because you can extend the life of these very easily by um, just adding extras from time to time so now for the rusty touches you can just dab it and add two three colors together and use the water in the same manner we used it uh, with uh, acrylic paint so this is going to drip in a nice way right this rust is going to drip so this is like one of the first thing you can do it's quite wet that's why it is important to uh, dry your projects in the meantime and this water is going to create a look which is very convincing very similar to natural rust i will show you in this first corner i hope you can oh, i hope you can see what i'm doing you can let it drip a little bit and then you can always add new coat on the top if you decide that uh, this is the wrong color you would like to have more or less let's see what have we got Uh, this is paste uh, and I don't speak Spanish but this is paste and that is water reacting product as you can see So you can see the more dry it is, the more trans, uh, so more, the more matte it looks. I'm trying to show you the result. Now you can add a little bit of the other color if you'd like to get, you know, more bright in some parts. You can, of course. And this is the moment when I usually add a little bit of the yellow rust as well people think it looks like mustard but after drying it turns into gold it's kind of awesome so don't be shy it always looks different it lo does look different when it is in the jar and when it is dry it looks darker this is one of the things you need to know about rust paste it does dry darker
So this is one of the things you can do. You just play with the effects like that. Let's do the other side of that frame so you can see it here. So I usually start with brown and red and then I also add some finishing touches with uh, gold rust. And some red in here as well. This out of drying though. This is the only disadvantage here. You have to dry. It's just because uh, this question about the why the big jars don't dry so quickly. The answer is because there's more of the moisture in them. They're just bigger, so more of the wet um, product inside, and that's why they last longer. These ones, they are smaller, so kind of dry. They dry out quicker. The product is exactly the same. They don't change anything. It's just that. Hello, Gabby. Hello, Liliana. Yes, you can reactivate them. If they dried up, you can try. Don't give up too early. You can always throw them away after you try, right? You basically just play with that. You tried water too and uh, let them for two weeks. Okay, they were completely dry. If it was in water for two weeks, they were dead. Dead and they were completely. I will just clean that up and I will show you the last thing you can do because I can repeat that on the other side of course but it will be showing you the same thing four times I think you know the concept already I 
I just make sure everything is completely dry. And I will show you the closer look. That's a good plan, especially if you use a lot of rust paste, you can use the big jars because they keep the moist better. But remember to give them the check from time to time as well. Okay. So now, closer look at the rust paste on the top of the acrylic paint. This is uh, basically almost dry and almost dry means uh, permanent. And if you look closer, it really has the textures like real rust would do. You know, when the rusting happens, there's kind of crumbling of the metal as well. So that's why this product has a bit of the texture already, but we have also our texture from sand, uh, te uh, sand effect. So it is even more visible. And now, because you can compare one side with just antiquing black color to the one with the rust, so you can decide what do you want to do. There's uh, things that you can do now to make it look a little bit more convincing. Uh, for example, you can finish with a tiny bit of wax as well. So uh, this is uh, an option if you'd like to clean up this is the moment when you can put your wax on. And uh, for example, I think the best uh, combination here would be the brushed iron because uh, old silver is very, very shiny. And you can use a tiny bit of it with your finger, you can see this is kind of matching the color and to touch the tops of some of the elements to clean them up. So for example, a little bit of to reveal the details, but you have to be, you know, listening to your own personal taste. If you prefer to have it more rusty, leave it, leave it rusty. If you prefer to have some of the details visible, like somebody was trying to clean the rust off, this is the way to do it. You can just play with these and you know create the look that is showing a little bit more of the detail. Don't go too far though. If the rust really likes to be um quite visible so it's going to look better this way so now on the left side we just have the uh, black acrylic paint on the top and here we've got with the rusty finish and uh, for the rusty finish we use three colors of rust effect paste permanent acrylic medium it is matte and I think the best results you're really going to have if you will keep the rust matte. So if you plan to varnish that later, use the matte varnish. So the rusty finish is going to look matte because uh, naturally that would be the color of uh, the, the, the finish of the rust. Uh, let me know if you have any questions because this is uh, almost done. I can just paint the other side now to make sure this is going too much. But uh, you've seen all of the process on one side, the techniques. Uh, you can just use the, the, um, <laughs> the black color to make the colors uh, more natural and darker, or you can play a little bit more and get the rusty effects. So this, um, this combination of products is really easy to use 
once you have your background in metallic acrylic finish, it's just basically playing with the brush and water. Uh, you can have it outside if you're going to finish that with the varnish and it's not going to be in the rain. So this is going to behave exactly the same way as any other acrylic finish. So if it's going to be on the porch, for example, and it's going to be sheltered from extreme conditions such as uh, frost or uh, snow or rain, it is going to last because uh, this is going to be varnished properly, couple of coats, and then it's going to stay safe. But if you're going to leave it outdoors in the rain, there's not a varnish that would hold it all forever. It's, it will start to peel and fade like any other uh, wooden acrylic painted item. Mm -hmm. Have you got any questions uh, about this process? Of course you can do similar finish here on the outside of the frame. I'm going to clean up this black a little bit, but I'm going to add more rust. And uh, if it's just for the indoors, you don't really need to seal it with anything. This is as permanent as acrylic paint is. So if it's going to go on the wall in your house, you don't really have to do special varnishing because people usually don't touch the frames that much anyway. It's not a table. Acrylic paint usually is enough, but if you want to, matte finish is better solution. It's going to look nicer. Let's have a look what happens now if we put the glass back in place. Of course, this is not fully painted, but let's imagine it is. And I have a lovely vintage photo I can put it in, uh, I can put inside. Oh. Hopefully I can... Yay! Photo from the flea market. This is like, looks like, like, like a school photo. Very old. Uh, let's see, where is the top? Okay. Yeah. That is part of the plan. And quite cool looking. Just have to forgive my lamp now. <laughs> For a moment. You love both sides of the frame. Well, that means you have to make two frames. <laughs> because then you will have two projects <laughs> done and you will have two finishes. It it really depends what you are going for, right? The uh, rusty finish is much more grungy, while the uh, just silver and black is um, a little bit more natural. You can use brown paint as well, uh, or as I said, antique wax, but uh, it's the matter of finding the shade that makes you happy. For silver, kind of natural, just black color makes a lot of sense. But for the other shades of metallic, you may feel better with the dark browns, for example. Yeah, the photo suits the rest. That w that's why I was thinking this will be the best solution. Cieszę się dziewczyny, że się podoba naprawdę, bo to taki prosty przykład jak użyć mediów do zrobienia czegoś do domu. Niektórzy się troszeczkę boją ich używać, nie wiem dlaczego. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. It was my big pleasure. Of course I will paint the other side now so I can put it on the display at home. Uh, but um, just for now you can see the finish. On one side just um, metallic silver spoon paint with a delicate touch of black impasto, right? And on that side, the same combination, but 
combined with the rust paste. Okay? This is really um, fun to do. And this is permanent finish. So these pa uh, pastes, they're cousins of acrylic paint, but they're also cousins of the texture paste. And in any way, they have permanent finish. So once they're completely dry, you can touch it. Nothing comes off. If you put water on it, nothing comes off. This is uh, sealed and this is ready to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you will go, uh, you're going to try something similar because it's really, really fun. And my, you know, my pleasure to show you all that. And a huge thanks to all of you who are here watching. And of course, uh, those of you who are my patrons, just a reminder for you, tomorrow we have a special date. I'm going to post it in a group in a moment, the same time in our secret place on my YouTube channel, and we have our patrons party. So this is important, remember, don't forget, you don't want to miss that. <laughs> We have our special party with surprises and secret sneak peeks. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope that make, made it easier for you to understand how to use the rust paste. And remember to keep them wet. If you have just a bit in the jar, it's going to dry very quickly. So it's good to put some liquid uh, fluid medium in it to keep it moist. Or in the worst case, just water, but something that is going to make them uh, flowy. So don't leave them when they feel dry because they are going to dry out. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. My poor boy has to deal with life, <laughs> unfortunately. Thank you so much. And uh, in case if you are joining late, remember you can watch the replay of that it is recorded and uh, you can see the previous stages of the work the frame was white and with just simple decors here one of the decors in the corners thank you thank you remember about the uh, patreon party tomorrow my patrons tomorrow is the day for the secret secret party with surprises and sneak peeks thanks Bye! <laughs>